All right, welcome back to another art time video where today we're going to be continuing that drawing that I was working on outline wise. So I went ahead, of course, and did all the coloring, shading, and texting of the characters. And I drew the rest of the two girls in this as well. So um, before I talk about them, let's just uh, go on ahead and do the usual beginning portions of the video. If you enjoy it, please leave a like and uh, subscribe for more. All right, now then. So these are the girls of um, the group known as the Iron Maiden group. This is their group even before they decided to become uh, a division in the Unknown Entity Tracker organization. Now, uh, give, me, um, give me a moment to go on ahead and uh, compile me thoughts. All right, so. This girl right here, her name is Hitoto Masako. Yeah. Mito, uh, Hitoto is um, essentially the scientist girl. And she's a little... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, overly sexual, as you can tell. She has a, uh, psychic, a personal psychic Gora that uh, the group managed to somehow capture, even though, you know, those things are like, powerful as hell. But thankfully, one of the girls here, I don't remember which one, was able to um, preoccupy that Sekikora, quote-unquote, as, um, you know, they were making their way over to their base. And, uh... She <laughs> really But, uh, yes... He acquired uh, Sekikora. The cat's in heat mode, so expect to hear loud meowings, loud sad meowings as the cat tries to cat call another cat, but there's no cat in existence to give the cat her cat needs. Anyways, um, we've referenced her before. So, um, we, uh, you know, those who are on DeviantArt was, uh, you know, always expected her. That's the word I'm looking for. Expected to see her. What the hell are you doing, cat? But yes, um, those on DeviantArt, shit. Wish you would stop meowing so I can focus. Oh, God, I'm in quick mask mode. There we go. Those on DeviantArt 2's read up anything about the uh, two drawings of the Iron Man group, as well as those on Patreon who's seen it. There's only two could have seen it. Actually, hold on. I can, I can check and see exactly who saw that. Yeah, would you stop scratching? Post dashboard. Let's see. Okay, uh, let's, where is it? Viewers. Which one saw that? Okay, so one patron saw it, at the very least. And I highly doubt that you were, you, the Patreon who came to support me on Patreon. I highly doubt that you watch these videos, but if you have, you know what I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. Of course, I'm only talking about that one person. Who knows, in the future, we might have even more. Shashish. Also your face, sir. All right, so I'm going to have another one of these desks back here, maybe like a couple or something. Desks more likely going to, like, contribute to more of a, like, you know, general uh, paperwork area. Or do I want a door here? <laughs> Regular outside office door here, right? Think about like maybe having windows here as well, showing their like main room. But they're in here as like little hangout or something. I don't know. If that's the case, we could probably have like another thing here, and there's just, just like the main office, right? Like right here, so the door behind uh, Yuki. All right, so um, I have current events. So let's see. Uh, I have played a little bit of Tiny Tina's uh, Wonderland as of late. 
I'll probably be playing that a lot. Be putting uh, Forbidden West on hold for a bit. At the very least, that game isn't completely... Well, I wouldn't say Dying Light is completely broken, but uh, the dialogue glitch definitely is off-putting, as well as a few other bugs I haven't come across yet that I've been reading up on. Um, but, um... Yeah. I'll probably be playing that game for a bit. So far, so good, though. I got myself a... What was it? Spellbound? Spellbind? The, the spell one that allows you to use two spells. I got a spell cat girl. Of course, I'm going for a... If we're going for the fantasy route, I might as well go for the cat girl right, route, right? I mean, I don't think I got, like, good old, um, attractive look. What are you doing? Why are you scratching that now? Don't scratch that. Just because I ain't the one scratching it doesn't mean it doesn't affect my back. Don't give me that look. I don't even know you can hear her whirring. I'm assuming if I'm back far enough, the cat will probably show her face and then just do the, do the, the what do you call it? Um, I don't even know if she's going to do it or not. The thing where she goes up on, where the cat goes up on your, um, your body and just like lays there kind of thing. I don't know where I'm going with that one. I don't know how to explain it. Uh, don't you play with that? Hey, I know what you're trying to do. Trying to play with more trash, huh? I should throw that out at some point. <laughs> now, I gotta say, it's an interesting concept that they went for in the um, in that game. The whole fantasy aspect. So since we've been going for like the sci-fi planet kind of as shooters, it is interesting to say the least that this is the uh, route. Or is it, it more, is it more of a spinoff? A lot of the characters here have like, what was it like? You know how the pre prequel had um, the Australian Aussie accent kind of deal? I'm wondering if... Well, it, it does 2K it, Australia still exist? I wasn't really paying attention to which division of 2K made it. Hey, Stop it. Don't give me that word. I said stop it. Why did I click that? But, uh, yeah, it seems like the... I mean, it makes sense. The prequel was, uh, wasn't exactly, um, how you say, um... Consist like one, two, and three is what I'm trying to say. One, two, and three. One about like um, you know certain uh, voice kind of like how, how do I explain this easily? It's like the main series. Yeah, that's that's what I'm, the, the set of words I'm trying to say. One, two, and three are part of a the main series, well, a prequel, and the. Tiny Tina Wonderland is technically a part of its own spin-off series, kind of, so to speak. Even though the prequel is canon to something. And, well, yes, I haven't really gotten that much progress done within this game yet. I've only just gotten to the point where we, um, well... Uh, Spoilers for those who don't know the the queen died. God save the queen or something like that. I don't know. Yeah, yes, we can go to that. Uh, like a ring slot. And assuming I can get this completed within an hour, this seems a bit too small. Hold on. I should have transformed this first. God, I was just do this. This is a hell of a lot easier. I don't even know what the hell I was doing here with that. Move it. Move it over. 
Um, maybe up against it. Up against? Up against the wall? Probably. We could actually just do this. Apparently there's some problems with, like, the shift servers. Did I just track segment? Yeah, don't do that. Don't do that again. But thankfully I'm a solo player, so... I ain't got no friends to play with, and besides, I usually prefer playing alone anyways. Do my own thing. Now there's one moment where I've played with an old high school friend. Probably like, what, a year ago, maybe? During when Borderlands 3 was out. And we were going on or doing the uh, whole, um... You know that quest where you have to, like, go inside of this, like... What was it? Forgot what I forgot what the enemy was in that game. It was some corporation enemy. It wasn't Hyperion because Hyperion was a doll. Was it no? Was it doll? I don't remember. Or was it bandits at that point? No way. I think it was bandits. But we were in some space, and there was like okay, best the easiest way I can explain it. The final round involves you fighting a giant red and blue mecha. Two mechs, red and blue, you know, about that kind of deal. That's what we were doing. And uh, he was struggling a lot as a Zane main. And I was, uh, I'm going to actually just put the, uh, put this door. I want to just put this here. Oh, no. Okay, possibly no. I had like a, a good combination where I had like the skill tree that like constantly healed you and allowed you to deal damage as uh, this orb was out. It was a pretty good combination too. Then I had my skag give the, itself the ability to revive me and all that stuff. So it was a pretty good combination. If I do say so. Anyways, yes, I mostly am a solo player. Got through most of the game solo-wise. I will tell you that it was a pain in the ass to do most of it. Obviously, the raids are the ones that we didn't really do. I did do a raid with that high school friend. You know who I'm talking about. If you watch this video, shout out to ye. Even though I'm not going to say anything yet until I know that you don't care if you're getting shouted out. Despite the fact that I'm talking to Void Demons and very barely any audience. But we were doing the, one of the recent raids. Well, recent raids. The first raid. The ones that I really feel like there should have been a freaking checkpoint at the boss fight area. Just stop scratching. Go to sleep. Go to fuck to sleep. And we're gonna have it be like a double door or something. Double door. And maybe like a curved variation of this. Even though you're not gonna be able to see it. Yeah, it was a pain. And he I think it was still using Zane at that point. And I was still using, uh, well, of course I was still using, stop scratching! I really need to put some goddamn blockers underneath the bed so she can't get there. There we go. And, of course, in the end, it ended with me soloing the boss at that point. Like, um... I was in like a certain groove, kind of, so to speak, where I was in like a, a pattern. I figured out the boss's pattern at this point. I gotta say, Zane, not really uh, that useful. Uh, I think you gotta find like a very specific build with Zane for him to be extremely useful. I found like the perfect build with Flak. I mean, I was like a glass cannon, but... The entire point of the flag bill that I was utilizing was to constantly regenerate health. I was like I was barely having any shields. Currently, the build that I want to try to go for is something similar to the flag bill, minus, well, 
my girlfriend a grave warden or whatever the hell is. I think that was sport warden. That's called the grave one. You know that one, the thing of which is the grave and this, the thing that uses the grave and stuff like that. I'm I'm assuming that this particular class utilizes um, what do you call it? Dark magic, you know. I feel like dark magic over here is a pretty um pretty good a thing to have because we've been dealing with like a crap ton of enemies, like so many enemies. Right now, the current spells that I have been using, and this is pretty early game, so I don't have anything too special. The current spells that I have been using consists of a, basically a barrier that slows enemies inside of it, but also heals me and allows me to do more damage. And then there's the, um, the charge attack thing that I shoot a bolt of this red blood-like dark magic thing, whatever it's called. And it does a lot of damage to the enemies. Uh, we also got pretty good weapons pretty early on. I haven't gotten... I haven't really gotten that far yet, but from the looks of it, there appears to only be like three levels. Which is strange. Then there's only one skill tree as well. Now, of course, you're able to dual class, but I haven't unlocked that yet. It seems like that's going to be a story thing. I'll unlock that later on in the story, like everything else, obviously. But it uh, seems like there's going to be, like, what, a max of two skill trees with a max level of 40? Strange, isn't it? Isn't it? Kept? Okay, well, she's about to sleep, so I should not bother her. But, uh, yes, that seems to be the case. Huh. Mm. Never gotten any, like, decent outfits yet, though. Apparently there's some, like, armor, but I've only been stuck with the one that I have currently. We'll see what happens. I gotta, uh, get, gotta progress more. At the very least, this one seems like I'm gonna stick with a lot more frequently. I mean, for one thing, there's no other games that I can think of that's coming out right now. The only one on my mind is Sonic Frontiers, and that's not going to be coming out for a little while longer. At least we don't have anything about it. There's also Wumpa League, but, um, again, another one that barely has any news coming out of it just yet. Although, part of me is worried that Wumpa League is going to be just a party game. Because, uh, well... Unless there's bots in it, so it seems like I'm going to be acquiring that game. I don't really care for PvP kind of content. Especially on the PS4, where I have to freaking pay for PlayStation Plus to be able to play online. Which is not right. So, as I've played, I mean, in the past, I've played Crash Team Racing with all bots. Got to a point where I had to play with the bots on hard mode because I was able to beat them nine times out of ten. Most of the times, at least. Uh, not unless they're using a perhaps one of those stupid time clock things or or the other thing, the, the blue orb that just destroys everyone. But, uh, yeah. I'm really hoping that's not the case for this one. I'm really hoping, at the very least, this is going to be like Crash Bad, but revised. Maybe not like remastered, but revised. Maybe we like get an extended campaign, but there's also a bunch of um. Oh, wait, this should be um. But there's also a bunch of like you know. And I was like, it would make sense if a uh, campaign mode of, of, like, if Wumpa League was basically just Crash Bash, but, like, revised. Remastered. Re-imagined. Re, uh, like, well, not really the trilogy. Like, expand upon, like, how Crash 
team racing was and I've repealed. Probably light here, so God, I'm so freaking tired. Why must I be so tired? All right, any who's in wits, we're gonna put lights here, and then after that, I'm gonna probably I don't know carpeting. Yeah, sure, why not? This isn't the main office, but this is like the um, lobby office. You got uh, three desks, maybe four actually, if there's like one behind here. Or like, uh, she, she obviously is the leader, she probably has her own personal room or something like that. I'm gonna put a carpet like right here or something. Oh, if we're going to be putting a carpet here, I might as well try to make this match instead. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, what else was there? Oh, there's not too many games out that I can think of that I want to get. But I am curious to see what uh, kind of game Sonic Frontiers is. From the sounds of it, it seems like it's going to be... Uh, wait, what did I just select? Okay, wait, what? Hold on. Something stupid happened. That's what happened, you idiot. You, you grabbed the thing instead of nudging it. You dragged it instead of grabbing it, I mean. Mm, we could just have this be like a, you know, what? Regular, basic old storage desk. And we'll just have a box of supplies here. And since you can't really see it, I'm just going to have this here and it's going to be like stripes to make it look like a bunch of stacks of papers or something. I don't know. Yeah, this would make sense. They work out here. These two work in their own offices. Like, okay, let's see. If I were to, hold on, I have this here. If I were to set up like how their office would look like inside of this area, I would say, just this is just a good reference to have in general. Mm, maybe this will expand outwards, like so. I would say here's the office room. Like so. And, well, obviously with their desks there and then their little storage desks here or something. I don't know why I'm doing this, but this is not going to take too long, so I might as well just like screw around for a bit. Um, I'll just put it here. Matter of fact, I could just hide the girls for a second. And we could just do this. Dang old... In, out, in, out, in, out, in, out. <laughs> okay, you can see them all from here. All right, you need to be this de degrees. This degrees in that direction. This might need to be thicker. I hear Dolph declare this needs to be thicker. So, um, yes, of course. Here are the desks. Right there. Just so you see it. And right here. Probably not like that big. Beeth the door. And the door right here. Ladies, well... If we want symmetric, uh, if we want symmetry, symmetric, symmetric, if we want symmetry, we want to do it like this. So here's a lobby, or their main office in the, um, you know, their new uh, digs in the um, unknown entity organization, or ent uh, unknown entity tracker, I mean, not organization, fool. And, of course, the exit, which is going to be a much larger door, is this like so. Yes. And we could probably put, like, a cabinet here or something. Why not? Cabinet. For all the files to be organized on the outside and stuff like that. So you walk in, you go to here. Um, that's just an extra spare desk that they have as they 
You know, they have enough offices and stuff, but they have they still have enough supplies for other things. So, okay, that's too big of a chair. That's too skewed. So there's their chairs. Okay, right. Now, as you can see, that's how this setup is. Correct. I don't know why I did this. It makes more sense for me to do this. Then do this. We're literally just lance or landscaping. Architecting. We're doing what George Costanza wants to do. Architect. All right. Um, okay, so apparently you need to be further in. Are you not connected? Fine, I'll connect. I'll do this, even though this connects that in the most weirdest way possible. Oh, wait, no, that's fine. Surprisingly. Despite the fact that it was not connected at all. Alright, so this right here is Yuki's office. She gets this. Oh, and by the way, the uh, the background's completed. As much as complete. I'm going to just name this as um, Office Layout. Why am I doing that? Extra content. Because why not? I feel like some of y'all's like the like uh, architect, right? Some of y'all's watching Minecraft definitely like seeing me build. Alright. So there's that. Let's cut a half hole in this. So like, I don't know, here or something. That seems off. A little bit to this direction. Cool. Now we do this, and then the beam. Although that does seem a little bit off. Um... Does this need to be bigger? Maybe. I'll see. I don't even know why I'm bothering since we can't. We're not actually doing anything with this. Alright, cool. So there's her office. Is this a symmetrical? Or desk, I should say. Should not be that big, though. Yeah, about like that big. If that's where the desk is. So there's where she does her work. Sitting, of course. So where would um where would we put this? Why are we doing this? Because I want an architect. Cadillac. Cadillac. All right. So um, let's see. So this is the side office, and this apparently is off by a bit. Let me just fix that, shall I? There we go. Oops, just nudge that back into place. Okay, cool, cool, great, great. Let's see. So I'm going to move this up here. And I guess technically speaking, we don't have to have it fully fill in the hole. Um, I'll do this. I'm literally outlining it. We're not doing anything here with this. So there's, well, her office, um, Hitoto's office, and this right here is, I swear to God, I fixed you, but apparently I didn't. Why can't you just go back to being a straight line? Why am I even true? But you were in the left direction. Why are you in the right direction now? I don't get how this freaking thing nudges its path half times. What? I thought you were in... Uh... Why is the pen tool so wonky? Are we in the right position here? No, how the hell are we not in the right position? Oh my god. It's like when you zoom in... When you're zoomed out, it looks fine, but when you zoom in, it's terrible. Also, I feel like your office needs to be bigger. Yeah, there we go. Cool, great, fantastic. Also, I kind of want to give them more space as well. No strange, we don't really need to, but I'm doing it anyways. Soup. All right, please connect. Okay, good. Great. Fantastic. Now here comes the pain part. Well, you know what? I'm doing this. 
We're just getting a good idea as to what their office looks like. Because I feel like that'd be fun. Also, why the hell are you like this? Why are you like this? Are you also like that? Why the fuck are you like this, bro? You seem fine, but apparently you're not fine. You're still out, despite the fact that you were straight before. Uh, I should have just moved that one thing and wait, now you're just one? Okay, whatever. It's fixed now, that's all that matters. Again, I don't know why I'm trying so hard with this. Despite the fact that this is not going to get utilized. It was full extent at least. Okay, it would make sense that they would have this particular kind of uh, room set up, you know? So this is, oh, hold up, actually, wait, this is pretty much symmetrical. I could just do this. I say that while well, this is not symmetrical. Yeah, uh, well, I don't know which, it, it looks, like it's always going to be off. So, um, this right here is Hitoto's office, like I said before, Minim Minimi's office. This right here is Yuki's office. And then we got Mitsuhira's office and Ichimata's office. Right there. Literally looks like a floppy drive, floppy disk. And if you also don't know what that is, well, sucks to be you, I guess. Or does, I don't know. And I feel like, of course, they need to have... Oh, hold up. Um, I'm just going to do this instead. Of course, they need to have some form of, uh, what you call it, room. I'll just... Fine, I'll just do this. If you want to be a prick about it. So this room is not going to be like this exactly. Um, let's, let's see. This room right here. Uh, it's going to be like this. I gotta make sure it's even and all that nonsense. And now. Okay. Let me just make sure this is connected, because apparently being far out is really deceiving. Whoops. Are you connected? Okay, you're connected now, and you're connected. Cool, great, fantastic. Probably not going to be that big. So this right here is where the time simulator is. Now, of course, this is just one basic layout. Not every single office is going to look like this in the unknown entities. You, uh, in an unknown entity tracker's uh, base. But this is their layout. Walking around the base, you come across the Iron Maiden door. If you are somebody or someone who has... If you are, know someone, or is someone who is a victim of um, sexual entity advances... Go to the, um, go to Team Iron Maiden in the Unknown Entity Tracker's organization. And they can find that entity and deal with it so future victims cannot be harmed. Anyways, there's the layout. Cool, great, fantastic. Now we just did wasted like what 10, 20 minutes architecting. Let's let's continue the drawing section. We just went on a little side quest. All right, I'm going to do the desk first, I guess. It would be interesting to see if I can make an entire building full of all of the uh, unknown entity tracker stuff, but I don't, don't quite know what kind of... Well... I guess this is not... This doesn't matter because we can't even see it. Yuki's muscular legs are in the way. Anyways, um, yeah, I, I only know of two organizations in the Unknown Entity Tracker's ba uh, unit. Base, well, I guess technically three, but there's a division. I guess it's more like a, no, that's a separate division. 
Well, yeah, we got the Marker Brave Vision and we got the Iron Maiden Division. That's essentially the um, setup here. If I can't really see it, I'm still going to have that there. Those are the only two divisions that I know of in this particular organization. And then we got the Entity Control Team, the ECT. I believe they were called that. Box. But, uh, yeah. These two organizations are the only ones that I know. That I have come up with. And I don't know what else I'd be able to fill the void with. There could be an organization that goes for weird stuff. Or, or weird entities. Maybe even mundane enti entities. Christ. Could be multiple different types of organizations. The entirety of the unknown entity trackers is for all divisions to track entities and figure out how they work. Figure out the, um, what you call it. And that's the one thing that I think a lot of people might be uh, misconstruing about uh, Reginald's mock break cases. Um, most people say the mystery is like, um, you know, the appeal to these particular types of entities and stuff, right? Right? And that does make sense. However, think of it like this. Reginald Franklin's done hundreds of cases. I'm, I think that should be more purple-esque. No, okay, too purple. Blue? That should work. No. That should work. That should look good. All right, so I'm going to go on so I can get myself a deep breath and continue talking without feeling like I'm out of breath. Oh. Oh, I wish I could just take a deep breath without, oh God, where'd my voice go? Why my voice go? I was trying to go crunk. Anyways, Reginald Franklin gathers as, as much intel on an entity as possible. And you think, oh man, well this is, where's a mystery? We already know everything it is about this entity. I'm not scared about it now. Well, you should be if you see the freaking entity. I mean, you know what to do. The idea here is that you're supposed to know what to do against those entities. That's what the Reginald Franklin's trying to help you out with. Give you knowledge on how to like deal with them, if you can deal with them, and how to get the hell out of Dodge. But, however, what happens if Reginald Franklin is unable to find any information on an entity? That's where the true fear gets in place. So amongst it, you're given like 50, hundreds, thousands of entities that we have some vague knowledge about. Even if half of those entities we are un unable to combat against, we at least know about them. But if Reginald Franklin done everything he could to try to locate... Okay, I feel like this should be more bluish. To try to... Okay, not, not that color. To allocate, like, the entity. Try to figure out everything that's about that. Like, how it works. How everything... How this entity works. Christ, I don't know how, how else I can, like... What up more I can say about it. If you can't find any information on that said entity then that's when you need to be worried. Because that means that this entity is a little bit more, you know, a mystery, obviously. A mystery and horror, they mesh together quite well, do they not? Which is why, if Reginald Franklin is unable to find any information on a specific entity, it's scary. So, um... The recent one, I believe, the Escorter. It's a good example. Reginald Franklin knows a little bit about it. Like, not much. He doesn't know a whole lot. I guess the best thing I can say to you about, like, what he's found about this particular entity is it has the ability to travel between dimensions. That much we know of. And it's capable of sending other entities into other dimensions. So, 
Because, for example, the escorter could potentially bring an entity that I created or somebody else created. I'll give you some good examples. Part particular types of entities that of which, you know, because it seems like this particular entity works with, or at least helps, the mysterious entity with all the mock brain horror stuff. So this guy is trying to bring forth a bunch of horror-related entities. Ones with the ability to brutally murder anything in their path. So, he could bring one of my horrific creations into our universe. Or he can bring somebody else's. For example, Michael Myers is a good one. Freddy Krueger. Um, the Blob. That's another one. That is a horror entity, right? Anything that's horror-related, the Escorter can bring into our universe if you want to. Of course, with there being, like, infinite number of universes, and the fact that uh, there are potential timeline stuffs to take into consideration, well, chances are we might not be able to see it in our lifetime. Or who knows, maybe it already happened. But if it already did happen, hmm, could you imagine, actually... But nah, it wouldn't be... It wouldn't be that. It'd be kind of... Well... It would be horrifying if that was the case, but it's... I'm talking about, like, the virus that's been going around as of past yes, sir. It's, it's died down, thankfully. By how much? Who knows? I barely had to worry about it, thankfully. And hopefully it stays like that. Why did I name this window? This is not a window. It's not a window at all. I don't even know what this is. I'm not even following my own... What do you call it? System. Yeah, we got walls here. Because I got a ventilation shaft in between areas, I guess. But, uh, yes... We only know that much about the Escorter. We know that it brings entities from other universes into different universes. Um, tra transfers them between universes. Simple enough. I don't need to try to continuously explain it to you. And, um... Uh, oh, crap. What's it doing? Why is it doing this? I'm just simply shading it in. Why are you not responding? Yeah, I don't know why you're doing that. So, uh... Uh, where was I? Where was I? Where was I? Oh, yes, right. There's not really too many unknown entities that we know about. The mysterious entity is definitely one. Major instance. Original Franklin wants to try to figure out everything there is to know about the mysterious entity. And just as how Reginald's Mock Bray Division is focusing on trying to gather information on one of their major, you know, projects, the mysterious entity, just so as the Iron Maiden Division is trying to gather information on one of their major projects known as the Mysterious Woman. As uh, has been stated before, it is presumed that the Mysterious Woman and the Mysterious Entity are somehow related. Which would make sense. One entity requires the power of lust to be able to um, become powerful. And this power comes from anything lust-filled. Sexual nature. Rape is another. It's um, kind of the bad form of lust. The one that really gives her more power. And also... As um, unfortunate as it is to say this, even though I don't really think the mysterious woman is my creation anymore, I think she just let herself be known, and I am just trying to relay her existence so that people know that she exists. She is a heavy advocate of pedophilia. 
And it's bad kind, too. The bad kind as in, like, um... Oh, it's always bad kind. The bad kind as in... Like, uh, It's worse than rape. It gives... Okay, like... Let me get a graph up, actually. Here is normal sexual nature. Us consenting, consensual adults, stuff like that. And, uh, of course, uh, out of the chart, I need to have a max point up to her second strand of hair. So this is you and me, consensual sex. Well, actually, no. This is... You went up. This is you and me. Well, what we usually do in terms of looking up stuff. On a chart, the lowest brand, this is us looking up sexual images. Getting aroused. This is basically the bare minimum. Um, whoops, wrong one. This is us masturbating. Not that much. I mean, more than this. This is us having sex. Maybe a little bit hot. Simple, really. Now, of course, we dip into the bad portions. This is those out there who are raping. A huge power boost. Extremely high power boost. Now, in between that, there are those with negative sexual attractions. But um, I don't think it would be that. I think it would most likely be here. So, masturbation, negative sexual attractions, thought of rape and all that stuff then sex, then rape, and here comes the very bad one, the one that gives her more power, pedophilia. Folks, cut that shit out. Because the more you think about doing kids, the stronger she gets. And if she gets stronger, well, I don't know what she does. I know what the mysterious entity does. And I really hope that that doesn't come to fruition. What he does, I'm not going to spoil what he does. Also, don't forget, Mysterious NC likes everyone dying. So, obviously, if he's at full power, it's pretty obvious that if he's at full power, we're dead. Maybe he won't, he, he won't kill us. I don't think he's going to kill us. Or it. Mysterious Woman is the female. Well, I'm pretty sure... Mysterious Entity is more leaning towards the side of it. He's more monster. Well, I don't want to spoil it. I can already feel the mysterious woman breathing down my neck, making sure I don't spoil what she does. I can even feel it as I talk about the fact that she does that. Did I do something wrong, mysterious woman? I felt like a chill as soon as I said it wasn't that bad. But it is that bad. It's not the bad. The bad of the bad. Like, obviously, you know what I fucking mean. I don't know how else I can really explain it other than the fact that it's very bad. Because if she gets more power, who knows what she'll do. Maybe she'll rape us all. I mean, those two are like two in one, right? One entity follow goes by bloodlust, the other one goes by lust. One, presumably, is going to kill us all. The other one, I have to imagine she's going to rape us all. I really hope um, we are spared, though, of that, because we are creators. Everybody here is creating stuff, creations and stuff. I mean, that's I think that's the th case here. They're probably not going to hit our universe with anything, because we are providing them a decent amount of power. Even if we are just, even if we are just one node of like potentially infinite numbers of universes... They're not going to kill us or rape us. I imagine a mysterious woman would like to play with us a bit. Not fully take us out of the universe, but play with us. I would say, watch your ass. Because, uh, unlike with Luna, Luna only goes after people who are 18 and older. And that's quite obvious with the fact that we haven't went after the... Um, girls of Class 1A in the My Luna Academia series, but rather, well, I would say least focused on, but Midnight and Mount Lady has a significant amount of fetish. I would say Uwabami and the uh, Wild Wild Pussycat Girls are the ones that are least focused on. 
the one that of which barely have any attention in the fetish art community. But yes, you get what I mean. With Luna, we don't have to worry about it. She will wait until you're 18. Weird, yes, but she is a self-proclaimed villainess. So it kind of does go hand in hand with her, you know, villainous side job. But with a mysterious woman, there is no limits. I mean, with Luna, there's limits 18 and older and probably under a certain age of, like, old. Like, she doesn't go after the elderly people, obviously. Only those that are attractive, that she finds attractive. The mysterious woman falls to the wall, bro. It's all game. You and your 100s? Well, Luna won't touch you, but the mysterious woman definitely freaking will. It's more of a case of um, whatever sexual energy that's negative is what gives her more power. And I'm not getting a chill down my back, so I think she wants me to talk about this. <laughs> Imagine. I highly doubt she's actually looking down on us. It's just like Zone uh, Zone 10? Watching us all fap. Only difference is the mysterious woman actually has a hell of a lot more power than... Like, okay. I've said it before. It's theorized that the mysterious woman and the mysterious entity are the product of their own food, of their own nutri of their fuel. All of the murder, death, and killing in the world is what fuels the mysterious entity. And I believe I had said this before in the past, in previous drawings. All the sexual energy, lust, and all of that in every single universe it was fe is what fuels the mysterious woman. It would only make sense that those two would be considered to be the most powerful beings in the universe, the living embodiments of their own fuel. That's what the mysterious entity is, the living embodiment of death, bloodlust, chaos. The mysterious woman, the living embodiment of sex, rape, and all sorts of that kind of stuff. Um, part of me thinks that there's like a third somewhere along the lines, but I don't think there really is anything I can add in. There is one being, but I want to save that being because for later, oh wait, no, you need to be more. There we go. I want to save that per particular being for like a later date. When I actually get to the point where I make the... It involves duplicates, so to speak. This particular being involves duplicates. But I won't say anything more about it. Of course, there's the realm of the cat factory that focuses mostly on weird content. But I say that thing works hand in hand with providing the cat's content. Which is pretty hilarious. You're seeing all those cats just walking around the facility, harboring a whole bunch of weird content. It's kind of hilarious. I guess that's the one funny thing about the around the cat cats. They harbor a whole lot of weird content, including pretty much everything weird, even the bad kind of weird. And I've said it before in the, the Weird Factory area. The Weird Factory draw. Um, ROTC cats have no genitalia. They reproduce by having a cat soul passing into the realm of the cats. When a cat passes away, their soul is sent to the realm of the cats. And they will turn into an ROTC cat. Um, let me, let me see if I can bring up the drawing for reference. Why am I doing it like this? It's going to take me ages to find it like this. I'm just going to open up the folders and see if I can find it here. Base drawing, JPEG, uh, realm of the cats. I don't know if it's, okay, it is C-A-T-S. Shush. All right, it's 41. I was close, but not close enough. They all turn into this. These guys. All of these guys right here. This is what all the cats turn into. When their soul passes away, they turn into this. 
They lose their genitalia. They become more humanoid. The ancients are the only ones here. Like, in the past, lore-wise, the ancients are the ones that still maintain their cat-like appearance. Their cat-like autonomy. Well, these guys get, like, this stuffed animal treatment, kind of. So, of course, you're not going to turn into an ancient, but rather a modern cat. That's what they're called. They're called modern cats. But, of course, there's only a limited amount of ancients while the modern cats are constantly rising. The ancients kind of just, like, do their own thing, like, you know, how most cats do. I guess the only difference here is the ancients, like, I mean, they still lack genitalia. They have no sex drive. At this point, they're in their nature. They have no sex drive because they can't reproduce because they don't need to reproduce because they're immortal. That's the entire lore of the ROTC cats. The cats that pass away become immortal. It's literally the equivalent of, if you strike me down, I'll become more powerful. Then I'll become more powerful in death than I am in life, or whatever. However the hell that quote goes. I don't watch Star Wars. I only know vaguely what the quote is. Of course, just because that's, you know, the case doesn't mean you should, like, rush that experience. Don't, uh, don't the cat. You won't be able to see them again. I mean, at the very least, unless we have some way of getting into the ROTC. I and mean, even if you do somehow get into there, the cat will probably resent you and probably would sick the, R the ancients on you and get you killed. Because they'd be scared of you. What you did, you piece of shit. But yes, um, that's the entirety of the ancients. They literally... Uh, well, you know, uh, brain brains. That, that's the entirety of the ROTC cats. They literally just um, pop into existence as soon as their soul passes on to the realm of cats. <laughs> that's why I'm no closer somewhere up there. Now, where you still got many years ahead of you before you go to the ROTC cat. She's only like, what, almost two years old? Definitely more than a year and a half. My old thing will goddamn talk about some good old fashioned ROTC cats, man. No, not the background, you fool. Go to blink. Let's delete the background, even though I can just reverse it. Alright, cool. Great, fantastic. I don't know if you, can, you should be able to see that. I would like to, at some point, have my theories be proven true. But the only way for that to happen is if we've somehow managed to find the technology to travel across universes. And we find one of my creations in the flesh. Or one of my creations crosses in our universe. Uh, but at the rate we're going, I have a funny feeling we're all going to die before we can even get to that level of technology. Before that can even be proven true or false. Although I would think that that theory would be well received by most Christians. Because at the very least, if that theory is true, then Christians know that their God exists. Maybe not in the same vein of their universe, but in a different universe. Their own universe. What if that's actually the case? Those who created Christianity are actually able to go to heaven because their souls passing into the universe, that of which those who created heaven... I don't know how, we're, uh, how to continue that sentence. Why do I not know how to continue that sentence? Those who follow Christianity will be taken to heaven because those who created it made the universe real. And, obviously, there would have to be some souls to move people over to that particular part 
I mean, that's a really good way to try to uh, explain how Christianity would work if my theory turns out to be true. Theory. It's not really a theory. It's my hope. Although, with the fact that everything is created, it has this, like, lifelike appeal, even though we're, like, we are literally, like, crafting it with our hands. And I feel like that's how we are able to open up the window to see into those universes, you know? As cool as that sounds, there's no way to know 100% for a fact unless proof has been provided. And can proof be provided? I don't know. Me have no idea. But it would be cool. I would love to see Luna in person. For more than one reason. But, like I said before, it's, um... It's unlikely to happen. Even if it is true, chances of our universe actually being connected to the timeline out of which a particular creation enters into this universe. I mean, hmm, is that a, that's like a 1 in 50 chance. And even then, there's like, you know, like, well, what if they, uh, re what if this is our original timeline? What if we can't change our timeline? What if our timeline is stuck to this particular timeline, where no, nothing's able to get to our universe? And that's the thing with this. If they intervene into a universe, technically speaking, they're not helping out the people who were, you know, in danger. Unless, say, the uh, universe that the person went in to get help with is connected. It could also be the fact that the unknown entity trackers are somehow managing to connect their universe to the ones where all the entities reside. Obviously, they'd have to be very careful with how they do that. For one thing, the entity could try to find that small connection and go to their base directly. Hmm, so I don't know how that would work entirely. I mean, let's see here. The entirety of the unknown entity tracker base is located within what is essentially a pocket dimension, similar to how the ROTC cat's weird factory is created. What this means is it's literally just this metal base, unaffected by any form of gravity, in a void, in a black void of nothingness. And this void obviously can be expanded upon. They can make more bases. And by using the technology that they have, they have time simulating technology, which allows them to create a holographic display of the time of a certain universe. It's like recording the entire world, or in this case, the entire universe. And being able to look back at the, um, the moments that happen. Actually, this is a really nice thing to talk about while I'm technically working on a, an organization inside of this particular group. So what the time simulator is, it's like, think of it like time travel, except you're a ghost. It essentially creates a holographic display inside of this treadmill-esque kind of, like, space. Like, okay, you see what I do in the office layer here? That circle is literally, okay, maybe, not, well, yeah, literally the um, time simulator platform. And around that particular platform is, you know, where all of the uh, magic is done, or in this case, science. So let's say you want to, like, look back at, ah, this is a good example, is Dan Holder Tider, she's a fighter, Snyder, really, uh, pedophile. We know, well, we definitely can assume that he has a foot fetish i.e. the bad person with the foot fetish out there trying to freaking... I mean, don't get me wrong. Child me liked what I saw. For some of it, not all of it. But now old of me is like, huh, that is weird. That was weird. Wait, hold on. That's sus. That's real sus. Isn't that sus, cat? Is that suspect? I'm pretty sure that's suspect. But yes, we could look back using a time simulator and see if any of those events actually happen. Actually, 
Actually, it'd be a good way to see if Dan Snyder's actually the father. If you don't know what I'm talking about. Chances are that's probably already disproven, but I don't keep up with freaking social media because I don't care enough. But for those that do care, stop scratching. They are able to go into the time simulator and go to a time where they suspect that the events went down. Of course, this is where things get difficult. You have to figure out where Dan Snyder resides in most of his time. Shh. Yeah. And you'd also need to figure out, wait, like, this is actually a really good way to, like, try to give a good example as to the amount of work Reginald Franklin has to do in order to acquire, like, any sort of clue as to where the entity is and what the, like, what is causing the entity, what, what caused the entity to be created. To try to find the moments of all the allegations of Dan Snyder means that you'd have to shift through a large majority of his life. You're basically look looking at this at a dead man's perspective. Your ghost literally following around Dan Snyder for some reason or another. Whether it be to acquire proof of his wrongdoings or to free him of any allegations. Chances are he might actually not be what we all think he is, but he's just a man with a temper problem. Who knows? Without the time simulator, there's no way to know 100% for a fact unless police are able to find proof, which police aren't really that effective sometimes. But that's aside from the point. The point is you would have to literally stalk this man as a ghost and figure out when and where the event goes down. I mean, obviously, if you have some clues, like, when was the child born? I forgot who it was. The, the main star of uh, Zoe 101, right? I forgot what her name was. One of the Spear sisters she is, I think. Like I said, I don't keep up with pop culture stuff. <sighs> Well, yeah, no, it's not really anything in that department. Anyways, um, as I was saying before, the clue you'd have is when was the child born? And then you go back nine months there. And even then, you, you don't really have an exact time either. Like, sure, it's an estimate of nine months, but some of them give birth earlier or later. Who knows? I do declare... I do declare. I think pink is what I want. Shush. Shush. So you'd have to go through days. Hours. Maybe not minute. Well, maybe minutes. I mean, is he going to foreplay? I don't know. I don't want to think about that. That's disgusting. I only like girl-on-girl -girl stuff. God! Get out of heat! I knew it just went into heat, but get out of heat. God damn it. Uh, why can't cats just be quiet when they're in heat? Shush! Alright, where was I? Yeah, but... Oh, hey, you get the point. I'm too tired and distracted by an obsessive meowing to try to um, piece together my thoughts. But you get the idea. With that particular instance in mind, with that particular... That's a really good way to... Okay, another good example. Did OJ do it? Did OJ kill them? Look back in time at the exact dates or late... You know, all that stuff? Boom! That, you know, the time simulator is really useful technology for trying to figure out, like, who done it. But why do I feel like there'd be so many privacy violations that the judge would just throw out hard evidence of that happening? Like, we know, we saw you kill them, the, the person, but this particular kind of evidence is unethical. And killing someone is... 
I mean, as annoying as that is, that's the kind of freaking world that we live in. Uh, I can understand the ethnics, the ethnicity of it, of this particular technology. And that is why Reginald Franklin is using it to find entities. There are monsters out there that are just murdering people. Same thing with uh, Yuki's group. Yuki's group isn't using it. I mean, I guess she'd be using it to, like, find clues. But Yuki's trying to, like, keep these girls in tip-top shape. They may look scrawny and weak, but these girls are actually quite strong and, you know, fast. Cardiology and all that stuff. Of course, their strength still is rather limited. When it comes to dealing with the Sekikura, not many people can fight against their strength. I'm talking about the Sekikura, not the girls. You know the Sekikura, right? I've showed you... I showed you a picture of them. Yeah, I remember now. Okay. I was gonna... I was about to go on ahead and grab a picture, or at least try to zoom in on it. So, oh wait, no, why is that there? That's, that has to be here. Anyways, yeah. They're strong, but they're not strong enough to deal with, like, superhuman, or in this case, alien strength. I guess it depends, really, on alien strength. But, uh, yes. They are actually quite in fit, in shape. And notice how these two girls are also quite thick. These two are the only ones who are kind of skinny. Skinny girls, somewhat average size breasts, well, average. They are a little bit flat, though. But they do, they are wearing jackets, like flares. The cat. Well, at least you're not meowing. God damn it. But, uh, yeah. Um, whatever should increase the breast size. Or should I just let them be flat chested? They're not flat chested. Well, I can't use mine as an example because I actually have. Okay, not her size boob. I think theirs might be bigger than mine, actually. Oops. I accidentally clicked the wrong thing. Cadillac. All right, Shadow Rays. And now I got to do this. Shadow Rays over here. Most likely that's where the light's going to reside. Probably have the room be well lit too. Gosh. Gosh, that face of yours. All right, so um, what, what was I talking about before? I can't remember. Something about something that I can't remember. Gosh. Oh yeah, so I was talking about how uh, that you know regulates the resonance frequency fine entities. So yes, with our example, we at least have clues that we can look upon. But with Reginald Franklin's example, he has to literally locate certain events that occur. Shut up! Why are you screaming? God, where is it? I gotta actually go in closer so I can see this. So, original Franklin, he has to locate the entity with or without the clues. And there's not that many clues that you can get. If you find a universe where a bunch of people are dying in mysterious ways, more mysterious than, you know, a person killing another person or an animal killing another person. Which is not about Shish. Can you give me that wharf? That wharf stash? I'll stop trying to try can. How does that not bother you? That's why I'm pointing at you. Um, but yes, with Reginald Franklin, he has to... 
It, it's, it takes some. You, you get what I mean. I, I snap, scratch, and Got me to freaking go over there and just freaking scare the shit out of her before her to actually listen because apparently he's shouting the shit. Where was I? Now we're almost done, anyways. Mayhaps. Mayhaps we're almost done? I don't know. Stop it. Stop. Where the hell, where the hell are you scratching? Why are you a destructive piece of shit? All right, here we go. Light purple area. I need to switch over to effects, not lighting. Yeah, I like the light blue area to have for most of the lighting in this place. I'll get rid of some of it for some of them. Oh my God, cat. Why do you have to be in heat? Why haven't you gotten to a point where you realize that it's pointless to try to Call upon another cat that cannot even get to you. I don't know why I'm doing it like that. I'll just... I'll have, have that be shaded in, actually. Except for Yuki. Yuki rem will remain unshaded. Or un like purpled in. For, like, some of it. Might have to actually... Um, I don't know why. But teal area, I might do a teal area. Who knows? We actually could do a teal area. Whoops. Overlay. Oh. Actually meshes in quite well. Quite nicely with the area up here. Um. Pink. We need to have some brightness here. But not so much so that it covers up most of the girls' faces. And some pink down here just because. Light that area up in the carpet portion. I don't really know what other character would be within Reginald's Mock Break cases. Or Reginald's uh, Mock Break division. Reginald is like the main leader of the... Um, the Macabre division. Like, um... I don't know who else I would add. With this particular group, there's more to add. It's funny how this group we're adding to the um, Unknown Entity Tracker. And we already have more shown here, character-wise, than we do in original Macabre cases. I mean, with Reginald's Mock Break cases, he actually has a crap ton of, well, not crap ton of cases, but he has a lot of cases. This group only has, like, two. All right, let's see. Is that all? We don't even have that many lighting in here. All right, it looks pretty good. All right, I mean, I could probably put some dark blue areas in here and have it be in the corner. Or the bottom portion. Let's just see, shall we? Yeah, let's darken this portion here, shall we? Not all of it. All right, I think that's all there. So let's go to Sepia, shall we? I'll most likely post this later tonight, or with you guys, it's going to be already out in Saturday afternoon. It's most likely going to be the case right here. So, um, obviously, you've already seen it. You're already seeing it. Or you're seeing it from the future. Who knows? That's a good one. Let me see if I can find another good one. Like that one. Less prominent, but still works. I'll save that. Let's see. Purple? No. The shade of purple? No. The shade of blue? No. Magenta? I like this one better. Bright, but not too bright. Doesn't change this whole, a whole lot, but still there. This looks nicer. Uh, I think that might be it, actually. Let me put on, whoops, put all my tools back on the norm. 
And I think that might be it. All right. I'll get my pointer out. So we got Yuki Takako, Mitsuhira Miyoko, Ichimara Aina, Hitoto Misako, and Minami Yasui. Pan ass to say their names. But there you have it. Yuki, Mitsu, Ichi, Hito, and Mina. There. Easier. Easier to go through the whole, what do you call it, names. So, there we go, folks. With effects. Without effects. With effects. Without effects. Looks cool. I honestly didn't think I'd get to do, um, draw these girls so soon. Hmm. I've been looking at... Ichi, actually, for a bit. Something does seem off about her eye. Do I want to actually... Wait, hold on. I can do a quick adjustment here. I can do a quick adjustment. Maybe, like, uh... Here or something. It could just be that I need to bring that up a bit. Uh, be careful, though. Mm, that might be the case. But then, that's, no, I mean, that's easy enough. We could do that. We could do that. And we could do that quickly. Yes, let's do this. Let's do a small fix. I'll bring her eye up a bit. Hopefully, I can grab all of it. Nope. That's fine. I'll just bring everything up manually. No, wrong one. This one. Now, can I bring this? Ah, yes, perfect. That better? I mean, in this direction, it definitely does seem better. Seems a hell of a lot better. And all I have to do in this department, technically speaking, is this go to C, gosh, and go to here. And just simply delete this small portion up here. I just, I did 1D, right? Just, just double checking. Oh wait, we don't want to do that. Don't erase. There we go. Yeah, at least in this direction, she's actually, okay, good. For, uh, the, the fantastic, perfect. My brain's trying to say perfect and fantastic at the same time and came up with fantastic. Or fantastic, or whatever. And it's awesome, great, fantastic, good, great, awesome. We did it! Yay! We did it! Another drawing done. Woo -hoo! I'm tired. Anyways, thank you all for watching. If you like the today's set of videos, please leave a like, subscribe for more, and check out the playlist for previous episodes, as well as the Minecraft videos. So I'm tired, maybe perhaps I'm going to go to sleep, I mean it is 424, 524 I mean, and thankfully you're not the worst day, so I'll see you all in the next video, later.